Right now, somewhere in America, a single machine is pulling 10,000 tons of steel, coal, and cargo across the plains. That is the weight of 5,000 cars being moved by one locomotive. Every day, the scene plays out at railroad crossings across the country. Car after car rolls past. 50 cars, 70 cars, 100 cars, all pulled by that lone engine up front, moving steadily like it is routine work. But the numbers do not add up at first glance. That locomotive weighs roughly 370,000 pounds. The train behind it, 20 million pounds. The question becomes clear. How does something pull 54 times its own weight without the wheels just spinning uselessly on the tracks? The answer involves a combination of physics, engineering, and a mechanical trick that most people have heard but never noticed. Start with the contact point between wheel and rail. It is remarkably small, about the size of a dime. On locomotives with worn wheels, it can be closer to the size of a nickel. That tiny patch of steel on steel is what holds up and moves hundreds of tons of freight. Steel wheels on steel rails create minimal friction. Engineers measure this with a coefficient of friction. For steel on steel in typical railway conditions, that number sits between 0.35 and 0.5. In practical terms, once a train gets moving, it glides with very little resistance. Low friction is what makes the glide possible. Think of pushing a heavy box across a floor. The larger the bottom surface, the harder it is to slide. More contact area equals more friction. Trains operate on the opposite principle. Tiny contact points and smooth steel surfaces meeting smooth steel rails. The effect resembles pushing an object across ice rather than across carpet. The old Ford commercials demonstrated this principle. An F-150 pickup pulled one million pounds of rail cars. The footage was real, but the key detail matters. They pulled rail cars, not semi-trailers. Attempting to pull one million pounds of semi-trailers with that same truck would fail immediately. The rubber tires on asphalt would create enormous friction. The truck would sit stationary, wheels spinning, going nowhere. Rail cars roll with minimal resistance. Low friction makes moving enormous weight possible, provided the train can overcome the initial resistance and get started. The locomotive achieves grip through mass, substantial, concentrated mass. A standard freight locomotive weighs 368,000 pounds. That weight sits on 12 wheels arranged in two six-wheel trucks. Simple division reveals each wheel carries roughly 30,000 pounds, pressing down on that dime-sized contact point. This pressure creates the adhesion between wheel and rail. The grip needed for traction. The physics follows a straightforward formula. Weight on driving wheels multiplied by the coefficient of friction equals tractive effort, the pulling force available. A 100-ton locomotive generates approximately 350 kilonewtons of pulling force under good conditions. Converting to more familiar units, that is roughly 78,000 pounds of pull Locomotives carry additional equipment for traction challenges, sanders. Sanders are small hoppers that release sand directly in front of the drive wheels when conditions reduce grip. Rain makes rails slippery. Ice creates dangerous conditions. Autumn leaves decompose on the rails and form a hard, slick coating. The engineer activates the sanders and the sand increases friction instantly. Most of the time, though, raw weight handles the work without assistance. Modern locomotive designs have also improved efficiency in converting engine power to pulling power. Newer AC traction motors deliver approximately 80% of engine output to the rails. Older DC traction systems managed only 70%. That 10% efficiency difference translates directly to pulling capacity. A modern locomotive moves significantly more tonnage than an older model of equivalent size. When a train sits motionless, Every wheel on every car is held in place by static friction, the same force that makes sliding a heavy couch across a floor so difficult until it suddenly breaks free and starts moving. On level ground, moving a train requires approximately two to five pounds of force for every ton of train weight, just to overcome static friction. At yard speeds, the requirement is closer to two pounds. At mainline speeds, it climbs toward five. A 10,000-ton train needs 20,000 to 50,000 pounds of force just to break free from a standstill. 
If the locomotive attempted to pull all that weight simultaneously, the drive wheels would lose traction and spin. The train would remain stationary. The physics would win. The solution to this problem exists in a component most people have never heard of, but have definitely heard working. Draft gears. These devices hide behind every coupler on every rail car. They function as massive shock absorbers, but their purpose extends far beyond absorbing impacts. Draft gears allow the coupler to slide in and out of a large sleeve, several inches of travel in each direction. This movement changes everything about how locomotives pull trains. When the locomotive begins pulling, it doesn't engage the entire train at once. It pulls the first car. Only the first car. The draft gear compresses. The first car breaks free from static friction and starts rolling. Then the coupler to the second car engages. The second car overcomes its static friction and starts rolling. Then the third car. Then the fourth. The process continues, one car at a time, down the entire length of the train. Railroad workers and enthusiasts call this slack action. The sound is unmistakable near a train that is starting or stopping. That rhythmic, metallic banging, car after car. The couplers engaging sequentially as the slack runs out through the train. On particularly long trains, one mile or more in length, the locomotive at the front might be traveling at five miles per hour before the last car at the rear even begins moving. The engineering elegance becomes apparent. The locomotive never fights the static friction of the entire train simultaneously, just one car at a time. Piece by piece, the entire consist gets rolling. Without draft gears, modern freight railroading couldn't function at all. Current efficiency levels. Moving today's tonnage would require four or five locomotives to accomplish what one can do with draft gears, a clever mechanical assist. Historical context makes the achievement more impressive. Older journal bearings with friction surfaces created significantly more resistance than modern equipment. Engineers had to carefully manage throttle application to avoid wheel slip during starting. Roller bearings in contemporary equipment dramatically reduced rolling resistance. A train wants to continue rolling once it is in motion, but draft gears remain essential for the initial breakaway from static friction. Four factors combine to enable a single locomotive to pull tremendous weight. First, extremely low rolling friction once motion begins. Steel on steel with minimal contact area creates negligible resistance. The train maintains momentum easily. Second, Concentrated mass for traction, 368,000 pounds distributed across 12 wheels, gives the locomotive sufficient adhesion to pull without losing traction. Third, efficient power delivery and robust traction motors. Modern locomotives extract maximum pulling force from their diesel engines and convert it effectively to wheel torque. Fourth, draft gears. These overlooked components allow the locomotive to overcome physics by adding weight incrementally rather than all at once. These four elements working together enable a single locomotive to move 10 to 12,000 tons across flat terrain. Modern AC traction locomotives can replace three to five older DC locomotives performing the same work. Engineering represents over a century and a half of refinement, low friction physics, concentrated mass, efficient power systems, and mechanical advantage through draft gear design. Next time at a railroad crossing, watching that long string of cars roll past, the scale of the achievement becomes clearer. A machine pulling 50 times its own weight using friction, mass, and mechanical ingenuity. After more than 150 years.